This is the rocker Marty Gennetti, and you're listening to IYHWrestling.com. All right, we're back, and we're joined by the nasty boy, Brian Knobs. Welcome in your head. Hey, man, how you guys doing? We're doing good, yourself? I'm doing very good, man. I'm getting ready to come out to this big reunion and see all my rowdy friends. All right, that's, uh, everybody let me know right off the bat. It's WCWA Rules, that's with a Z, and it's a Dream Reunion 2. It's going to be October 6th at Kokomo, Indiana, at the Johannic Civic Center. Have you, uh, you enjoy wrestling, like, in uh, that area? You know what? I love wrestling in Indiana. It was always a great, great, great state. I mean, Indianapolis was always good. I, I was in the WrestleMania 8 there at the RCA Dome in front of 68,000. So the fans in Indianapolis and in Indiana itself are fantastic. I and mean, even back in the day when I was wrestling for AWA, uh, uh, for Vern Gagne, we used to always go in that, uh, uh, you know, go, go in that territory, which would be, you know, Illinois, Indiana, Minnesota, Wisconsin, you know? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so there's uh, some guys who used to be with in the AWA there, like uh, Marty Jannetty. I know. I can't believe it. I haven't seen Marty in a long time, so it'll be. It's going to be a. It's going to be a great night to, to get together with all of your all of my rowdy friends, and then afterwards we'll probably go somewhere and really turn it up a notch. <laughs> uh, do you enjoy like uh, meeting the fans and every, and uh, you know talking with them, interacting? Oh, well, you know it's great because I've been in the business for 22 years. You know, put it this way. The Nasty Boys wouldn't be nothing without the fans. The fans are what gave us the, the you know, the, the you know, star power actually to be who we are today. And uh, it's fantastic that everybody still remembers. Uh, I, I got to say it, but the, the older timers, you know, the legends, the Nasty Boys are getting a little bit older these days. But, uh, you know, it's great how everybody comes out and still remembers everybody. And the new uh, Legends uh, doll coming out uh, with the WWE Classic Red. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's really fun coming out and talking with the fans and, and, and then bringing up matches from, I mean, let's face it, I've been in this business 22 years, and, you know, from uh, the AWA to WCW to WWF, and every town we ever go to, people come up with matches even 20 years ago, like, what about that Steiner match back in the 90s, you know, and all that <laughs> stuff. So it's, it's just very good, uh, you know, talking to all the fans and having a good time with it, you know. Yeah. Um, how stiff were those the Steiner lines? I'll tell you, they were stiff, but I'll tell you, we gave it right back to them. Me and Bag, uh, you know, we, we were a kid for a time. When we got in there in 1990, uh, the WCW, not too many guys wanted to wrestle with Steiner because they were hurting people and stuff like that. And they put them against me and Sag, and we loved it, man. We loved the competition. We loved the, the solidness of the work, which was, there was a lot of potatoes going on back there. Everybody was whacking each other pretty good, you know? Mm-hmm. Actually, I remember one of the first, uh, it's like the, might not be the first time, one of the first times I remember, like, a table spot was when, uh, you gave, like, a power slam to one of the Steiners through the, through the table. Yeah, through the table. That was the first time anybody has ever laid out the Steiners, and we were the first ones to do it, and the people used to really, you know, the nasty boys, everybody used to really hate our guts, but after all these years, we came in to be like uh, baby faces now, so people actually like us. Mm-hmm. I'm still walking around with a mullet hairdo for the last 22 years, so, you know, <laughs> you can't miss me. You think that kind of stuff like helped uh, prolong your career doing like some of the comedy stuff as as, as a uh, as a babyface, doing like the Pity City and stuff. You know what? Well, Pity City was always uh, you know it's just one of them maneuvers like you know you had Yoko Zuno when he used to do the butt you know and, right. and it was just one of them maneuvers that was more in the in, intimidation factor. You know, you put somebody's face in your sweaty armpit and that's humiliating, <laughs> bro. You know, no matter mm-hmm. who it is, mm-hmm. and uh, we put some of the. Uh, Top stars, including Sting, in the pity city. So, you know, uh, it was it was good from A to Z. You know, everybody. It didn't matter who you were. Uh, if you're wrestling nasty boy, you gotta get ready for pity city. <laughs> did, you you know? have a, did you have a like a special armpit? One well, maybe you didn't put any deodorant on. If uh, like well, we if never, your opponent yeah, you didn't like. Boys, wait, we got the name the nasty boy because we <laughs> never wore no deodorant. You know what I mean? <laughs> Now, you know, and when after you could just see the expression on whoever when we were wrestling that night, their face, and you could tell like they were going you so and, and you're sick, <laughs> you know. So it was it was kind of actually fun, you know. It was, it was a good rip for twenty years. <laughs> right, that sounds like intro and I. Huh. Yeah, exactly. You know. <laughs> Yeah, you get a question. This is the second. I think this is the second reunion you're having now. Were you at the first one? No, but I we uh you know we remember that they were doing that Coco Beware and a bunch of people. Were you at the last one too? No, I wasn't at the last one. So I, I heard it was very successful last year, and I'm so excited to be part of it this year. 
because, like you said, it's good that you, uh, you can get a place and have a reunion with all the stars from the, you know, from the 70s, 80s, and 90s, get together, sign autographs, and have a, a wrestling show at the end of the night, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Looking um, like a good show. Yeah. Uh, did any, anybody ever ask to, like, get a picture taken uh, with you giving them the Pity City, the pit stop? Uh, you know what? Can you believe it? No. They <laughs> actually asked to be put in the pity city. They actually said, can we put my face in your armpit? And, I'm not, and I took more than thousands of pictures like that, and people actually come up to me and say, hey, can I have my picture taken with my face in your armpit? I said, no, dude, no problem. You know? <laughs> that, <laughs> it's um, a crazy world out there, brother. You know what I mean? Right. Hey, if you can get paid for doing that, I mean, that, that's good stuff. Uh, right, right, right now, I'm talking to you. I am in Hollywood, California, and uh, we are talking to a couple of networks. I got a new show coming out next year. It's called Trailer Corp Justice. Oh, man. It, it, it's real cases, Trailer Corp, you know, and they're putting the Trailer Corp, and they made me the judge. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, <laughs> awesome. If this isn't blind, it's crazy, brother. You know? Oh, man. If they lose a case. And, 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 my, and my bailiff, she's a hot smoking Maxim model. She was one of the top 50 most beautiful women. So, hey, all these other judge shows, all these other judges, they may have passed the bar, but I actually stopped in for a few drinks, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, I think Judge Judy's going to be doing the job for Judge Knobs. Exactly. You should see it. You should see. And my high court is my good friend Willie Nelson. So if I ever get stuck on a case, I like to pull Willie up, and uh, Willie can help me out because he he's been a lot of he he knows the legal system very very well. Right. You know, good Lord. That's what we're doing right now. So I'm telling you, I'll be getting on your show again to promote this show. But trailer court justice, justice isn't blind. It's crazy, bro. There ain't no messing with this court session because Nasty Judge Knob is laying down the smackdown. Oh, man, we can't wait for that because we were talking earlier. We thought maybe you were uh, doing like a spin off of Hogan Knows Best. Uh, no, bro. I actually we, uh, ran into a, a buddy of mine out here when WrestleMania was going on when Hulk was inducted in the Hall of Fame, and I haven't seen him in for a while. And he used to run up in the Calgary, and he used to wrestle himself, Fred Young. And uh, he is now an executive producer for Greenlight Entertainment, and so we got a great reality show for you. It's called Trailer Court Justice. I thought they were going to make me the bailiff. I said, well, what, what, uh, what would I be doing? He goes, we would make you the judge. And I said, where do I sign up? That's exactly <laughs> what I need. And I got my own chambers, brother, and I, there's a bar room in my chambers. So when I go to chambers, I have to have a little cocktail. And be trying to these real stubborn cases, you know. <laughs> I hope I hope we don't have. Well, I hope we do. If we ever uh, get sued for anything, I hope we uh, we get the oh, trial. Yeah. And they're, they're all. You should see some of these cases. They're all frivolous lawsuits, and they're all coming my direction. Come to my courtroom, and I'm showing you my brand of justice. <laughs> now you obviously could talk. Why did you guys ever need a manager? You know what? Uh, we when, when we first got in, it was good to have Jimmy Hart as our manager because he was our only real true manager. And then when we get back in the day, when we got. Uh, Missy Hyatt, I think Dusty Rhodes just put her with us for eye candy. Because a lot of times we're wrestling, and we're in, there in the midst of, you know, kicking some butt and letting the people really, you know, hate us. And then, uh, and then Missy's boob would pop out, and everybody would be looking at the <laughs> boob, and, you know, they weren't watching the matches. So it was like, you know, they were, she was more for the eye candy at, mm -hmm. the, at the time, you know. Oh, yeah. But uh, she, she was okay. I mean, she wasn't a bad manager, but Jimmy Hart was always into everything. At the time we had Jimmy Hart... He had his motorcycle helmet and his megaphone, and we could do no wrong, you know? Oh, definitely. Uh, what, was it different wrestling for uh, WWE than, like, uh, wrestling for WCW, like, just the, the style? They all had their, they all had their own, each uh, territory or each uh, federation always had their, you know, their different style, you know? I mean, WCW was a little bit more of a wrestling, per se, with WWF being wrestling and a lot of show on top of that, you know? Right. And uh, let's face it, you know, without the WWE or WWF at the time, Nasty Boys would never have been who they are today. Vince McMahon, I got to tell you, he made the Nasty Boys, so put this stuff there, and uh, we had a, we, we, we signed for a contract with no money, and we turned out a lot of money, six, six figures with uh, WCW at the time to go up there, and Vince said, all he said was, uh, I'm offering you an opportunity, but I'm sure if your opportunity goes right, you'll make more, way more money. And we did, and we went up there and signed, and that's what kind of lost the Nasty Boys in the being who we are today when we had that um, four-year run up there with the WWF. 
Yeah. Uh, do you have a question from the board, Incher? Uh, Specs on. He actually wants to know, what was your favorite or least favorite moment in the AWA? Now, what was that again? Uh, one of the fans wants to know, what was your uh, your most memorable moment of uh, wrestling for AWA? Well, most memorable moment wrestling for AWA? Or, not, maybe not just wrestling, but just being there. Well, well we, you know, we had some very awesome matches with uh, Midnight Rockers, which is uh, HBK, Shawn Michaels, and Marty Jannetty, mm -hmm. and also the match with uh, Rock and Roll Express, where my partner actually lost his tooth when he uh, went running in, and uh, uh, Robert Gibson, you know, moved out of the way. My partner hit that turnbuckle, popped up, hit his tooth on the steel post, turned around, and spit it right out in the middle of the ring. And he had a big gash down his head, and he was bleeding all over. He came back to his dressing room, and Vern Gagne looked at us and said, well, can you go back out for the third hour? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know his name at the time. I said, Vern, he doesn't even know where the hell he's at, you know? <laughs> did, 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 but the was great, man. It was a great starting block for us, and, you know, a lot of veterans came through there, and it was always, uh, uh, you know, at, at, at the time, AWA used to be a strong territory, you know? When we started there, uh, WWE, AWA, and NWA were all, you know, they all had their little niches, and it was a good place to work. It really was. Uh, do you, you, uh, you like, is that something that you feel like a uh, pride in, that you wrestled for all three companies and you were pretty much at the top for all three? Yeah, yeah, I have pride in that. I mean, our biggest drill was uh, beating a hard foundation at WrestleMania 7 for the WWF Tag Team Championship for the World. I mean, you couldn't get any better than that. You had Colin McCockerson sitting out there in the audience. You had, you know, Donald Trump walking around in the back, Marla Maples. You know, you had the guy from Jeopardy, Alice Trebek, <laughs> right. there, you know, you got, and all kinds of the movie stars were all there to see the show. So it was it was real hype, and it was awesome. It was, it was, I I know why they call WrestleMania the Super Bowl of wrestling. I mean, if there ever was, ever, have you never been to one, you should go to one because it, it, it's just like being at the Super Bowl for football. Yeah, I've been to two of them. Like you said, it's just just being there is uh, it's just really I mean, that special. One, that one in Indianapolis was a good time too. We had sixty eight thousand there, but that was a good time because uh, Indianapolis is such a small city. Everybody, all the boys were around, and we we had a, we ripped up the the city pretty good in the uh, for three four days we were there. You know. <laughs> mm -hmm. And do you have any good uh, any road stories you want to tell us here on the show? Any road stories? Yeah, I got, I got, I got, I got to save them because I don't want them to bleep me. But uh, <laughs> one of these days I'll have to come on there and I'll tell you some good road stories. <laughs> Actually, are you guys coming out to the reunion? I don't think we'll make it this year. Uh, oh, I'm up in Massachusetts. Out, I was hoping not even one inch biceps gonna make it. <laughs> uh, I can try. I, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we, we need to be hooked up, and when we do, I'll tell you some good road stories. I, I'm not so sure that road stories are good for uh, on-air broadcast. <laughs> right. I'll make sure Inter brings his <laughs> uh, recording all can, device. All I, can, all I can say is I didn't call it the Nasty Boys for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can we t are we gonna call her here? You got a you got a quick question for Brian? Yeah, yeah. Hey, what's up, Nasty Boy? I'm calling from Nastyville, Florida. Hey, man, what's going on? Not that much, brother. I'm looking forward to seeing you in Sarasota fighting Greg the Hammer. Oh, yes, definitely, man, definitely. I, hey, I, you know, I like getting in there with Greg because I really like to give him, you know, a couple of tables and chairs always sits my, you know, you know, I don't know if people know this or not, but he's my brother-in-law. And yeah, I, I actually did know, know that. I do know that. Hey, Nasty Boy, here's my question for you. Hey, here's my question for you. Greg the Hammer, he's a pretty stiff guy. Who's the stiffest guy you ever wrestled with? The stiffest, the stiffest people I ever wrestled with, I would say I would put the Steiners right up there because they were back in the day, man, when they were young and we were young. We were we were killing each other out there, you know? And uh, uh, you know, the, road warriors, the road warriors were pretty solid themselves, let me tell you. <laughs> I don't bet they were. Hey, don't take nothing away from Animal and Hawk. I, you know, Hawk knocked Sag out one time with a clothesline. Uh, I think we were in a Memorial Auditorium in Syracuse, and he he ripped them so hard that you know Sag's head flew back on the mat, and he was he was out cold. Like, I we had a be in here and drag Sag out, and then he was going, I'll come back in, but he couldn't stand up. I said, we let me go. He can't even stand up, so I had to run back in and finish the match. But yeah, we uh, between the Steiners and the LOD, man, there were some there were some pretty stiff matches. What about that suplex you took from? Uh, it's pretty legendary. The suplex you took from uh, Max Payne. 
Oh, man, you know what? Uh, he didn't know what the hell he was doing, first of all. Right. You know, cool. But anyway, <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, he almost he, he actually almost broke my back and my neck and everything because he didn't know what the hell he was doing. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, everybody saw it, and I got so many calls because... He really injured me. He tore my. He tore. He just ripped my my shoulder out of its socket. I don't know if you remember seeing it. Yeah, but I saw a lot. His back came up, and, and man, it, it, he almost he almost ended my career. Luckily, you know, like Lauren Anderson says in the the, the book, that knobs is a jellyfish. You know, <laughs> uh, luckily my body could bend in different way. You know, in different ways because you know, let's face it, the nasty boys weren't always the fittest. That's why we came out with the first one to, with the cover up syndrome. You know, all we had to worry about was our arms, that make sure our arms look good, because we got a sweatshirt covering all the other stuff, you know? Right. Cover it up, brother. Mm -hmm. hey, now everybody's covering up these days. <laughs> yeah, as long as you had the farmer stand going on, that's all you needed. That's it, man, that's it. Nice and easy, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I saw that live. I mean, pretty much your feet uh, hit the ground, and so does the front of your head. Yeah, I mean, it, it, was, it was a vicious, it was a vicious, uh, you know, this is suplex that I took, and, and uh, you know, Max didn't know what the hell he was doing, and he's lucky, you know, you know after that we, we had, like, one or two more, more matches, but he got hurt, and uh, then he was, then went to Kevin Sullivan and, and Cactus, you know? Mm -hmm. We had some good matches with Cactus, too. Oh, yeah, those are just, uh, you know, classic for the time. Yeah. I was just, yeah, well, that's, what were you saying? Well, we're, I, I am really getting excited for this reunion. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, so... Tell the fans, all come out early, get your autographs. You know, come meet the Nasty Boys, come meet Marty Gennetti. You got Jerry the King Lawler is going to be there. You got a lot of the guys that have been around the business for a long time, and it's going to be a fun day, the whole day and the night. Yeah, you got Rock and Roll Express, Jerry the King Lawler, Jim Cornette, the Midnight Express, uh, Ronnie Mack, Jazz, Baby Doll. This is really loaded lineup, Jimmy mm -hmm. Hart. And there's also going to be a Hall of Fame uh, ceremony that we're going to, uh, they're going to talk Bam Bam Bigelow, Sherry Martell, and Jerry Lawler. Well, that's, that's great. That's great. And, and Bam Bam and Sherry and Jerry all deserve it, but uh, Bam Bam and Sherry, especially because, uh, you know, they passed away this year, and, and my heart goes out for them, and, and my prayers are always with them, but they're always, they'll always be right here for right in the heart because they were very good friends of mine. Mm -hmm. and everybody go to what? It's WCWARules.com with a Z. And uh, Brian Nobbs is pretty busy right now, so we're going to have to let him go. But uh, like you said, maybe we can bring you back soon sometime uh, before your, uh, your show starts. Definitely, definitely. I'll, I'll definitely come back on the show. You guys are a bunch of good guys. I'm in Hollywood. I'm <laughs> ready to go to the bars right now. It's Sunset Boulevard on a Wednesday night, gentlemen. <laughs> Watch out. Harris Hilton, here comes the nasty boy. <laughs> oh, man. Thanks for coming on, man. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. Talk to you later, now. So I'll see you in Sarasota. Hey, you definitely, you definitely, and listen, if you want to go, go to www.trailercourtjustice.com, and you can check out a trailer of the show. You, know, you can see a trailer of our show, Trailer Court Justice, with the one and only Honorable Matthew Judge Knox. Awesome. Well, we'll put that up on the website so everybody uh, can check it out. Definitely, because you know in Nashville, every day's a Friday and every night's a Saturday night. <laughs> Hi, this is Max Payne, and you're listening to InYourHeadOnline.com. Jack and one-inch biceps, they're the greatest. I don't care what anybody says about them. They're all right by me.